Hello everyone, my name is Black Watch and welcome to a disgustingly belated episode of How to Play. Apologies for that, but I want to get back in, so here we go. And in this week's episode we're going to be taking a look at Sue Mei Lin, also known as Ying. She's an operator who, when she was added to the game, I wasn't too enthusiastic about, but I felt she would have quite a big impact on the meta. Now the impact hasn't been too big for a regular player, but in Pro League she definitely sees some play, so let's figure out why that is and how to play her. So Ying is a 2 armor, 2 speed attacker, and she's a member of the SDU CTU, that's a Hong Kong based CTU of the Special Duties Unit, alongside her compatriot Legion, who is a very fun operator. We'll be taking a look at him in a previous episode, which hopefully you'll enjoy. And she has access to two primary weapons, the T95 LSW, which is an LMG with a very fast reload, a very fast ADS time, and very low damage. It's... It's very LMG-ish, except it's slightly quicker in terms of ADS and reload than other LMGs because it's magazine rather than a belt-fed LMG. But it does make up for the fact that it has pitifully low damage for an attacking primary weapon, so it's really not that good, but compared to its alternative, the 612 shotgun, which is a semi-automatic six-round shotgun, you're better taking the compromise and using the thing that could shoot at long range. The shotgun's just too inconsistent, and it's like a lot of semi-auto shotguns. It's good when you're really up close, but you're not going to be up close too often when you're playing as an attacker. Her secondary weapon, the only secondary weapon she has access to, is the Q929 pistol. It's pretty good, actually. I quite like the Hong Kong pistol. It doesn't have a lot of recoil. Well, I slightly more recoil than the other ones, but I like the recoil pattern. It looks nice, and the damage is quite good on it, so it's not bad. Her secondary gadgets are breaching charges and smoke grenades. Definitely recommend the smoke grenades, and I'll go over that in a minute. And her unique gadget is the Candela Flashbang Cluster Device. So it's basically a big thing. It's a ball that can split in half and it can be used to throw out a lot of flashbangs in a very short space of time. So think fuses cluster charge if it was a rollable grenade that could also be used to deploy on walls. It's a very interesting gadget, and she has three of these to use. And what it does is it releases a ton of flashbangs into a room, which all detonate very quickly, and they're all very, very noisy. The difference is that when they go off and Ying is in the room, she won't be affected by it. Regular flashbang grenade goes off, yeah, she's going to be affected by it, but her ones, the Candelas, she has shades which cover her so she doesn't get affected by them at all. So she can basically flash a room and rush in, which is pretty major stuff. But it's not as strong as people thought it would be. Speaking of strong things, we're going to go over her strengths. So her main strength, biggest thing that she does well, is bomb when you're planting the diffuser. This is the one thing that seems to be used the most whenever she's actually picked in any situation, particularly in Pro League. This is what you'll see a lot, is teams bringing smoke grenades and bringing a glass and bringing a ying. So they'll smoke the area out, they'll throw in these candelas, which will then flash the people inside, and then they'll send the glass in to look through the smoke that's been laid and take out any stragglers who are running away or anything like that, and just basically using it as a big disruption tactic whilst the team is sitting there blind and they have no idea what they're doing. They then go over and deal a lot of damage or get the diffuser down whilst they're all disrupted by those candelas. It's also very good for single target disruption. If you're dealing with a single enemy in a room, then it can be quite useful. And it's also decent for covering your teammates in terms of using that big light support weapon. It's not a very good gun, but it has a lot of ammunition, so you can just pull the trigger and hold on, and it will lay down fire like nothing else. And it, even if it's not that strong, it's enough to maybe deter someone who's going to go for one of your teammates. So that's another thing she can do. In terms of her weaknesses... She has a very weak set of primaries. As I mentioned, they're not really good at all. I don't enjoy using them particularly. They don't have a lot of recoil, either of them, but that doesn't make up for how lackluster they are in the damage and accuracy department, unfortunately. Uh, that's the LSW and the shotgun, respectively. So you end up having a shotgun that doesn't have a very tight spread, but admittedly has a very quick semi-auto reload. It's actually a magazine that comes out of the shotgun from the back. It's a pretty nice looking gun, it's just not that functionally positive. 
and the LSW has a lot of fire in it because it has a ton of ammunition, but it doesn't deal a lot of damage and it doesn't really, it's just not very fun to play with, to be honest. The other issue she has is that the candelas are very inconsistent. A lot of the time you'll flash someone in a room and they'll be right next to the candela and just because of some little thing or object or whatever surface is in the way, they can essentially tank the entire flash without actually taking any effect from it. Which is far from ideal when you're wanting to push into a room, you're expecting the thing to function and then it just doesn't. But that's just the nature of the flashbang as a gadget, full stop. Even regular flashbangs have this issue, and candelas, whilst they don't have it as badly, because they spread them out in a cluster so they tend to cover a wider area, they do still have that issue. So when you're using the candelas, you can have two options. First of all, you can roll them in or throw them, and they're on a fuse, so you, the longer you hold down your gadget button when you deploy this, the longer it'll take for the gadget to actually pop. So when you throw it out, if you've just tapped your gadget button once and you throw it and it hits the ground it'll almost immediately detonate and launch out all of the things so what happens is it lands on the floor splits in half and it shoots out all of the little miniature flashbangs in an arc around itself if you hold it on for a little bit and extend the fuse it will roll for slightly longer on the ground then it will stop and detonate and your other option is to actually place it on a wall. So in this form, she snaps it in half, puts it on the wall like a cluster charge, and if it's straight away, it will detonate immediately. All the cluster or all the flashbangs will go out through the wall and into the room and detonate. If you hold the fuse, same with when you roll it, it will sit on the wall and it'll take a few seconds to actually go off. And this can be used to time particular push as well. You can place one on a wall that's a little distance from the enemy and then use the timer to your advantage so that by the time you reach them, the flashbang's just gone off and you get them freshly blinded, which is always fun. In terms of the inconveniences that you have to deal with when you're using candelas, you have ADSs and ADSs are a hard, hard counter to Ying because if she throws a candela in, all it takes... it. It's weird the way that it acts. Basically, the candela itself, in its base form, is a big ball. The payload is the miniature flashbangs inside it. I think there's five or six of them. Now, if you throw the candela into the room, you would think, well, hopefully, it would just detonate the miniature flashbangs. Unfortunately, the ADS actually intercepts the ball itself, so that's a lot of gadget to lose for not a lot of loss for the defenders, so it's very very high risk thing to just throw it into a room when there might be an ADS. Instead of doing this I would recommend actually placing it on a surface so it'll be a wall or a barricade and setting it off because that way there's no way the device itself is going to be taken out instead it will be the individual flashbang so you can if you were lucky if you had three ADSs in one area you could feed that entire ADS with one candela and then you'd have two left to use completely unaffected by the rest of the ADSs because well, there wouldn't be any more because they'd all be dealt with. But it's obviously not the easiest thing to pull off. You're not always going to be in a situation where you can set them off near ADSs. But if you do want to do it and you're fearing them, be aware that you can just basically feed some of the miniature ones to it without taking the risk of losing every single one inside the whole device. When you're playing on bomb, what you want to do is throw your smokes in and then throw a candela through the smoke and then you want to get in, plant and run away. Because once it's done, there's going to be smoke over the bomb or over the diffuser. You want to get in and just watch it after it's been planted. The candelas are a big deterrent because if people try and push and stop you from planting, they're not going to be able to see very well because you've slapped them in the face with some weapons grade flashy boys. So... The way that you want to capitalize on this, in my personal opinion, you actually want to get a shield to plant the bomb for you, or plant the diffuser for you, sorry. So you get them to go in, and they turn away from whichever window or surface it is so that their back is covered, so if anyone does resist with random fire, they're just going to be hitting their shield whilst it's on their back, rather than hitting you in the back. It also means that whilst they're planting the diffuser, you can cover them with more candelas over the back whilst still being able to get the diffuser planted. So both of you are active rather than you throwing out your gadget and then deploying the diffuser on the ground. 
when you're doing this, if you do it right, it can be very difficult for the, the defending team to actually get a sight line on you. The best example I can give is if you're playing on garage on consulate, it's very difficult to actually deal with that once everyone's been flashed and they've been pushed off because they have to make a very aggressive push. And if the wall's been opened up by Thermite or Hibana, it makes it that little bit more difficult to actually get a stable defensive platform and stop them from getting the plant off right on the edge of the garage door. So it does the job well when it works, but again, you've got that inconsistency of flashbangs as a gadget archetype in the first place, because similar to the way that explosives work, they do have some inconsistencies in terms of the collision. It's just slightly more noticeable with a stun grenade because you'll maybe get a tiny bit of stun or none at all. And there's some inconsistencies in terms of the visual effect where an operator will cover their face after they've been flashed. Sometimes they'll barely have any of the whiteness on their screen, yet they're still waving their arm around as if you just slap them in the face with a cod. So be aware of that. Just some general tips. The breaching in Candela combo can be quite fun, where you place a breaching charge down on a surface and then you put down your Candela afterwards. Put a little fuse on it so you can walk away for a second and then once it pops let all the charges go out and detonate and then pop your breaching charge run in whoever's behind that wall is going to have a nasty bad day and the other thing is that glass is your friend and you want to hang out with him whenever possible because he'll be there for you to take out anyone who's looking through your smoke who's trying to fight back and he's one of the good buddies for that little plant strat so if you're going to be planting rather than a shield operator you want to be covered by a glass who can look through the smoke that you've placed down and can place more smoke if he needs to. So guys, I hope that's given you a few tips on how to play Ying. It's a fairly baseline guide. Um, there's nothing too complex about it. Really, a lot of Ying play is actually just learning which spots are good to place those candelas and which spots aren't. You really want to try and avoid using them in rooms with lots of tables and separate bits of cover because they can majorly screw up your operation in terms of actually getting the damn gadget to tag people so you want to be able to detonate it and know that whoever's in that room cannot see you and if there's just little bits of disruption here and there you know a chair here a table there a bookcase over here looking at you bartley university you're not going to get the most out of this gadget but if you can get some clean stuns off with some clean sight lines and you can go and take them out bob your uncle have a good time Anyway guys, apologies for you having to wait for so long. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one, which will be for an operator I've been having a lot of fun with. And that's Finka. Catch you next one guys. Los Vidania. Bye bye.